yellow. Here I've got an Onkyo TX-DS787 uh, receiver, AV receiver. And it's said to be intermittent, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. And uh, I just hit the power button now and it came up and then it said protect and it went off and we've got a little flashing red light there. So let's turn it off and uh, give it a sec to see what else might come up. Volume, phono, a lot of glare on that. <laughs> And now it's staying on. Interesting. Go standby. Turn it on. I hear the relays clicking for the outputs. Turn it off. So it's got a big clunky mains switch as well as a soft standby switch. And now it's all good. Well I'm picking either dry joints or maybe um, bad capacitors so... So it looks fairly well built as far as accessibility goes. Um, we've got one large aluminium heat sink uh, on the bottom that runs the full length of this uh, it has all of the output transistors attached down the sides um, see along the bottom and then we've got what appears to be power distribution on the top uh, we've got our AC coming in from the transformer coming into here and right off the bat you won't see it on the camera but there's there's a very uh, dry joint on one of the AC lines there, so that that uh, may or may not be one of the issues. There's one over here too, so we've actually got a dry on uh, one wire of each of the the two lines coming off the transformer there. Some discoloration. It definitely gets warm through here, so we'll get this plastic off and have a closer look and yeah not a lot else going on all the controller boards over that side let's get that plastic off and check under there so uh, it looks like it may have had some rework at some point some of the connections just look a bit shinier or dirtier or fluxier <laughs> maybe not but I can definitely see with a naked eye one of these appears to have a ring around it so that looks like a possibly broken through dry joint um, I'm guessing it'll be a transistor on the other side of that um, and if this is a mirror image which it kinda looks like I would say that these two transistors here are the same as that one there and that one there but uh, doesn't look too bad on this side, but it's certainly a few joints need attention. And uh, we'll see if I can get the microscope high enough to um, show you, because as it sits, it's already quite high off the deck, so I have to get that working clearance above it again for it to focus. This is the AC input off the transformer and you can see a clear ring right around that pin that's almost broken away completely um, even looking at the one above it that one there that's got a ring forming around it and then if we head over to the other side let's that's the other side there that's not as bad it's probably all working at the moment but it's it's gonna be an issue um, 
and then if we move over to here it gets even worse actually I just saw one I didn't see before either so there that pin there that's pretty much broken around uh, this pin here even I just noticed I didn't see that before that's gone this thing is just riddled with dry joints so I'm gonna to have to pull out that module that runs right down the middle there and just go over it with a fine tooth comb and check everything but I don't think it's gonna be any more serious than that really this looks like it's gonna be quite easy to take apart we just need to get that plug off and then all these wires appear to be integral to the the center module and then just these two that run off over here to the speaker outputs so we just unplug those and then these signal wires uh, which we can unplug from this end and then yeah she'll just lift out nice and easy well, we're almost there but the uh, cooling fan in the back the wire for that is tied up in this loom so uh, had to cut that cable tie there'll be a plug we'll have to unplug once we get this um, out far enough to get behind it but it's all free there's just some screws down the sides and there's a metal bracket that we have to separate other than that they unplug easy as so in the back there's uh, one other ribbon cable that uh, goes into a connector there that I think the outer shell uh, will lift up on if I'm not mistaken and uh, in the should just um, pull out definitely moves I'm trying to remember how these ones come apart I think it's just clips on the side so it should let go there you go just give it a enough of a push <laughs> but, uh, yeah okay I'll drop the camera and finish it one-handed is a bit tricky as it turns out I was completely wrong about that <laughs> you actually push down on the top just like that and it slides down a bit and it releases the tension off of the cable and then the cable just basically falls out here's some more this is one of the edge connectors that joins the board on top to the the amp board on the side and you can see there decent ring around that and the next one along and the one below that so yeah just cruising along the board like that and looking for always look at edge connectors where, where two boards uh, meet there could be points of vibration there um, zoom out a little it's pretty obvious where they are even at that level might be able to give you a bit more light see that's that one there is looking a bit sus it's got a bit of a crack around it as is the one above it there doesn't take much and the annoying thing is if you <laughs> you could easily miss one you almost want to just paint flux all over the board and then get the whole thing stinking hot so there's another one there it's definitely gone I don't know how this thing was working at all when it did work here we look looks like we've got some manual rework going on that resistor is sticking up in the air blob a big blob of solder at each end uh, maybe a factory adjustment kind of like caps and resistors banded together and glued to the board that's a an afterthought you can actually see where they've gouged out the trace on the PCB in a few places as well there and there and I've seen a few all over the other parts of the board so yeah 
a few changes since production. Back up the end of the board, come down the other side, and this is where the this is where the power output transistors um, bolt onto the heatsink. So instead of just looking all over and then trying to remember where they are, I probably should be uh, fixing them as I go. <laughs> That'd make more sense, wouldn't it? And here we go. It does look like these top two may have been done once before, which is interesting. Now the couple of the screws that were holding uh, this whole module on seemed loose. So I don't know how someone could have been in here recently and not seen all the ones that are that are as bad as they are. Pretty sure there's one under that cap leg. Sure is. Well, that took entirely longer than I'd care to admit, but uh, I must have touched up a good hmm, at least 15 or so bad connections and another maybe 30 odd ones on their way to becoming bad, just preventative maintenance, yeah, so hopefully that's all it was. Um, do I do I bother to check the other boards? I wonder. Not a lot of heat in those, I'd hope. So they should be all right. But uh, definitely, I think we're on track. Just a dummy setup. Nothing screwed in, but it's all plugged in. And I'll turn it on. That comes up pretty quick. Volume, phono. 
Speaker relays clicked. Excellent. Yeah, DVD. Has it got a... Where's AM? You can hear that. That's good. But the trick is, will it do it tomorrow? Will it work? It was always sometimes on, sometimes not. I mean, it had to be the dry joints. <laughs> so we'll uh, let that go for a bit. We'll test it overnight. Um, we'll make sure it turns on from a cold start in the morning and uh, probably call it done. Well, it's been a few hours, so let's, uh, everything should be discharged. We'll give it another shot. No worries. I'm going to call that fixed. Thanks for watching.